What is up, everybody? You got Tone here, and I am bringing you my draft recap for season number four of the NPL Myers. The National Pokeball League is back for another season, and we are back as the coach of the main Red Clawitzers for the NPL Miners. Now, season three didn't go as well as I had hoped. Um, I had a lot of expectations on my end with stuff like Manaphy, Mega Charizard X, um, Sand with Tyranitar Stoutland, which I barely brought. Um, and I also had some other good mons like Crobat, Conkelder, Diggersby. And I only got two wins out of seven games and missed the playoffs. So it's basically going to be like a redemption season for me, I hope. So. Nonetheless, um, what's done is done. I learned from past mistakes and all that stuff like everybody else. So, the draft concluded not too long ago at the time of this recording. So, just to break things down, there is some differences between last season and this season. Mainly, season 3 was a free draft. And season 4, we now have a point-based system like... Um, the MPO Majors that also has a point system as well, where we're given 120 points to draft between 8 and 11 Pokemon. You don't necessarily have to draft 11 Pokemon as long as you're within the 120 point limit, as long as you draft a minimum of 8 Pokemon. So... With that in mind, I decided to base my strategy around a team consisting of either 9 or 10 Pokemon. I didn't feel as though 11 would help me because I don't really feel like... I didn't think having a team of 11 would benefit me any more than having 10 or 9. The extra Pokemon helps, but at the same time, I wasn't really in that mindset. So... Anything between 9 and 10 would do me just fine. 8 would make me a little bit too predictable with my mons, so... Um, I decided to hold back from drafting 8 mons at the minimum. So, so telling you guys from now, I did draft a team of 10 Pokemon that I really, really am gr I'm glad I got um, within my 120 points. So... My strategy heading into this was, first off, it was based on my draft position. And luckily for me, um, you get the option in the league to choose where you want to pick. So, with that freedom, I decided that I wanted to draft as furthest to the back as possible. So that way, I can adjust. My, I can start my strategy off based on what everyone else is picking with their round one picks. And then I go from there. So, out of 16 people, I managed to grab the 13th spot in the draft, um, which is still fairly close to a wheel pick, so I can't really complain about the position I got, and I'm actually grateful that I was able to get a pick as far back as 13, as opposed to getting something like maybe 10 or 9, because I'm not really fond of drafting in the middle like some people are so I'm not really overly pressured to pick a good mod and then I have to wait a while just for my pick to for it to come back to me and all the stuff I want is gone by then so at least with that little bit of freedom there I decided to um, see what everyone else was doing and then make my strategy based off of that so I had about five draft strategies or draft plans going into this um, and when it finally came my turn to pick, there was one strategy that still looked very, very good. And it had the first Pokemon in my, um, I had that first Pokemon I wanted, which gives me a lot of versatility, utility, everything rolled up into one, bit, into one package. So with my first round pick, number 13 overall in the draft, I decided to pick up Clefable. So... Um, most people know what Clefable does with the amazing fairy typing, perhaps the best, um, arguably one of the best, um, fairy type non-mega Pokemon in Draft League format. Of course, there's the Tapus to consider nowadays, um, but considering the fact that Clefable gets access to stuff like Stealth Rock, Soft Boiled, 
Um, it can be a calm mind sweeper. It could be unaware. It's a great ability for a defensive Pokemon. Magic Guard's a great ability for a Pokemon like Clefable, so it's not easily worn down by hazards. And on top of that, that Fairy Typing is such a great defensive um, typing, giving me a bug resistance, a dark resistance, a resistance to fighting, and a dragon immunity all rolled up into one. And the nice thing about Clefable is the fact that I don't have to necessarily run the same set over and over again because of how versatile its move set is between Moonblast, Fire Blast, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Psychic. The list goes on and on for what Clefable can do and how people have to address um, potentially Clefable running havoc on any team if they're not on, if they're not prepared. So the main thing that I wanted to do this season as opposed to last season. Last season I waited a while to complete my Dragon Fairy Steel Core. This time around I made I made it a priority to complete that said core with my first three picks. So I was glad to get my fair type of Clefable. I was ecstatic to get it and it's Arguably, maybe not a steal for 15 points, but it's very good value, and I couldn't pass up Clefable at any point during this draft. So now I need something to complement Clefable and its versatility. So I decided to, to um, go a little bit on the offensive here and pick up um, a Dragon or a Steel type. Like I said, I wanted to get that Dragon Fairy Steel Core as fast as I possibly could before all the good mods are taken. So when it came back to me for round number two, with me being so close to the wheel, I had a bunch of options on the table, um, and I actually was able to get my primary pick. Um, I was thinking about getting either Latias or Infernape here, but those were my second and third options respectively, and I got my main option to pair up with Clefable, and that Pokemon just so happens to be Delta the Latios. So, Latios is such a great Pokemon to pair up with Clefable, simply due to the fact that, <clears throat> excuse me, it replies to the offensive pressure. It's Clefable takes on the dark type moves for Latios, um, and Latios is just a hard hitting wall breaker with that base 130 special attack, respectable base 110 speed and special defense. Can't pass that up. And on top of that, it gives my team something hard hitting right off the bat as well as an option for defog as it is one of the best offensive defoggers in the, the in draft league format also gets reliable recovery with roost um draco meteor hurts hits like a truck um psy shock is a psychic psy shock is going to be doing a crap ton of damage doesn't really have much for steel types other than hp flyer but that's still going to be doing a lot of damage from its high special attacks that and it's a very nice Pokemon to pair up with Clefable, especially with Clefable taking on two of its main weaknesses being um, Dragon and um, and Dark. So that's very nice. That's a very nice Pokemon to have on my side of the team. And again, it was also 15 points. So um, good, solid value so far with my first two Mons in Clefable and Latios. Like I said, couldn't pass it up. And for the most part, I'm looking very, very good with my with my core. Now for round three, like I said, I wanted to get a Steel type Pokemon. The main Pokemon I was trying to get round three was um Mega Scizor at this point, but Mega Scizor was taking round two, so I had to adjust my strategies. So that's my strategy. I had a bunch of different options for round three in terms of a Steel type. Um, there was something like Scizor that was still available. There was... I could have held back a little bit longer. I was considering something like Mega Agron to make it for the fact I did get Mega Scizor. But then there was one Pokemon that just somehow fell to me at round number three. Um, and I figured I couldn't pass it up. Um, and so I ended up taking Excadrill. So, another offensive hazard remover uh, ground steel typing gives me my fairy dragon steel core right away and extra drill in and of itself puts a lot of pressure on opposing teams just because of mold breaker I don't have sand to go along with it no Tyranitar no Hippowdon um, it's actually a rule in the MPL that if you draft a Pokemon that takes advantage 
of whether it has a speed boosting ability and whether you actually have to shell out more points for said Pokemon. So if I had drafted Excadrill with like Tyranitar, Hippowdon, or Gigalith, um, I would have actually had to pay 21 points as opposed to getting it for just 15. So I didn't really feel as though that weather was a necessity for me, especially I didn't want to be cons I didn't want to get into that um that notion of I had to bring weather. I didn't want to be so self conscious that I have weather as a playstyle. Not saying it's bad. It's just that I just want to break out of that habit of getting like sand offense um, for my draft teams. And given my given that Etudro is a offensive rapid spinner, putting a lot of pressure on opposing stealth rockers. Well, most stealth rockers, not all of them. And has a sense in general. I can always take advantage of opposing um, teams. Sand if they bring like T Tar at Powdown against me, I could potentially take advantage of that with by bringing Sand Rush or Sand Force, and force them to not bring Sand Stream of their own, so that way they'll get um, reverse swept by the Sand that they set for my Excadrill. And it has a respectable base 135 attack stat, so and access to Sword Stance, so can't really go along with that. So now that I have my Dragon Fairy Steel Core out of the way, the next thing I wanted to do is address something that I didn't really have much of in Season 3. I didn't really have much of a speed factor. Um, in Season 3, my fastest Pokemon was... It was Crobat, and then I had a bunch of Pokemon at like base 100 speed, like Manaphy, Zardex, uh, Celebi, and then everything else was just below that. So I wanted to have something that at least broke base 110 speed, and I wanted something... I want something that keeps on the offensive pressure, something that's a threat every time it comes onto the field, whether it be as an offensive role or as a supporting role. So with that being said, my round four pick just so happens to be my good old pal Scolipede here, coming in for 14 points. So we're rounding out the team very, very nicely with some good potential um, balance here. Just giving me an offensive sweeper, gives me the option of just being a life orb set, I can baton pass, speed boost to any of my Pokemon. So now with my Scolope, I'm not pressed for having to rely on my opponent having to bring sand. I can a speed boost, I can baton pass, speed boost to Excadrill, and if they don't have a response to Excadrill, um, they can get reverse swept. I can pass speed to Latios and. I can outspeed Scarfers, meant to outspeed um, Latios. I can baton pass speed to Clefable, and it can potentially do Calm Mind or Cosmic Power Stored Power sets. So the list goes on and on. It also gives me an option for spikes and toxic spikes as well. Um, it's not just limited to being an offensive mon. And I couldn't pass it up, especially for it only being 14 points. So it may seem as though I'm. I'm using my points kind of recklessly, but at the same time, I had a plan where I wanted to spend at least no more than 15 points for the first few picks, and then towards the end of the draft, I get like some lower tier mons, and then if I have anything left over, any big points left over, I would see if I get like a high point valued on um, Pokemon that can fit my team so that was the point that was my process going into the latter the middle and latter stages of the draft for me so so far my team is looking very very nice with the Fable, Latios, Excadrill, and Scolipede but with that all being said I have some offense on my team and now I need to get myself some bulk so first thing I wanted to address was trying to get a bulky water type it may have been a little bit early for round 5, but I figured that once one person starts taking a bulky water type, then everyone starts taking a bulky water type the same round, and I didn't want to miss out. So with my bulky water, I ended up going with Vaporeon. Now arguably, I didn't necessarily need to go Vaporeon because nothing on my team really needs Wish support. And also to be fair, there was other Pokemon like Jellicent and Milotic still available when it was my turn to um to draft but i figured vaporeon would just be a little bit more efficient for this team considering the fact that um while my low tick does get access to instant recovery with recover same thing with jellicent um the other thing that vaporeon gets that the other two doesn't get is baton pass so 
if put if it comes to a situation where I can if I can um, bait something in that Vaporeon can't touch, I can baton pass out to any of my other offensive mons. Um, and plus, being a backup Wish Mon, so I don't have to bring Wish on Clefable, does does help me out very very nicely. And on top of that, it does give me a Water Immunity, which the other two Pokemon, I mean, which my Lotus doesn't do, and Jellicent does get Water Absorb and Recover, but um, albeit it is a little bit didn't really fit what I wanted to do. Although Jellicent would have given me a Water Immunity plus. A spin blocker, but at the same time, I didn't really want to like um, force the issue. And on top of that, I've never used Vaporeon in Draft Fleet format, so this is just um, me getting my feet wet, no pun intended. So that is basically my main reasoning for Vaporeon, just giving me something that can. Um, I'm a wish passer, it's still very, very strong, um, special attack wise, even uninvested. It does have higher special attack than my low tick, which is beneficial for those skulls hitting slightly harder. So that is my vape that is Vaporeon. So now for round number six, the other thing I wanted to address with my team um, that I had plenty of <coughs> on my team last season with um, Conkelder and Diggersby is the fact that I didn't I don't have priority. Um, and when you're outsped by a lot of teams, you by a lot of things by your opponent, you want to make sure you have something that can mitigate that um, speed. So I figured I'd try to go for something round six with something with some pretty strong priority. And <coughs> it just so happens that this Pokemon just fell to me at round number six. So I decided to snatch it up for um, 12 points like Vaporeon here. And I decided to grab Entei and... Uh, there's nothing really much to say about Entei, just click Sacred Fire and try to burn stuff. Um, barring fire immunities like Heatran, Arcanine, and all that stuff. <coughs> it's a very straightforward Pokemon. Um, one of the best offensive fire types in Draft League format besides, behind stuff like Infernape, which is a lot more versatile, but... Infernape is just a threat right away when you send it out. You just click Sacred Fire, pick things off with extreme speed. Its coverage move pool is somewhat limited because of the fact that it only gets access to stuff like Flare. It only gets like Flare Blitz, Sacred Fire, Stone Edge, Extreme Speed, and stuff like Bulldoze. But when you hit as hard as a Choice Band and Entei, you don't really care about the extra coverage. So you don't really mind it that much. And the main thing I just got it for was the fact that I needed priority on my team. I didn't want to rely solely on Speed Boost Scolopi, Choice Scarf Latios, Choice Scarf Excadrill for the sake of trying to outspeed certain Pokemon. Having that powerful priority for for opponents to be afraid of is something that my team needed. And for 12 points, I can't go wrong with the value that Entei provides me for my team. So, rounding down the last four rounds, for me at least... As you see, I only have 37 points left for four Mons. So, I figured at this point, I need something that can give me more immediate coverage or immediate offensive presence. I did have enough bulk so far with Clefable and Vaporeon, and I figured I'd get some more bulk towards the end of the draft here. So, what my thought process was heading into round number seven was... Get something that can also take advantage of Scolipede's ability to baton pass speed boost. And as a certain someone did during the um, March Madness tournament by a good friend Trev, who also pulled off this strategy, I decided since it was there, I was initially planning on um, drafting Thunder Asterion round 7, but it was taken the same round, so I can't be mad about getting sniped by Thunder Asterion when Zerkatree is right there. <laughs> Um, chilling, waiting for me to take it. So, picking up Zerkatry to go along with that crazy, um, Scolipede Zerkatry core, in which Scolipede Baton Pass boosts to potential, um, Tail Glow Zerkatry, and it just wrecks teams. Um, base 173 special attack is nothing to, to sneeze at, and... <laughs> It's, it's low speed or below average speed mitigated by the fact I can baton pass speed 
from Scolipede as well as a potential substitute to my Zerka Tree. Um, set up a tail glow for free and then just decimate stuff between Thunderbolt, Hidden Power, Ice, um, Energy Ball, Signal Beam, the list goes on and on, but under the right circumstances, X Zerka Tree is is a is a goddamn menace. It's there's literally nothing much I can say. It's a hard hitting wall breaker that's um, mitigated by its low speed. But like I said, I have Scolipede. <clears throat> I have ways to slow down opposing Mons with Thunder Wave Clefable. So it's not like I'm worried about having to rely solely on my Scolipede baton passing boost speed boost. But it's always nice to have as an option in the back and. For 14 points, you can't go wrong with Zerka Tree. So, now moving on to the last three rounds. Um, the one thing I also want to have on my team, I wanted a Dark Type. Um, if I didn't get X Control round three, I was going to probably get um, Crocodile instead to back up um, Stealth Rocker, um, Pursuit Trapper, and all that stuff. Um, and there wasn't really that many um, Dark Type Pokemon available that I wanted, <laughs> but there was one. That fit the bill for me, and I can't really complain about it. And that Pokemon just happened to be Scrafty. So Scrafty he is here with um three great abilities: Intimidate, Moxie, and Shed Skin. It can be a bulky set of Mon Intimidate to weaken those physical hits. <clears throat> um, Moxie with Dragon Dance, so I get a couple of D dances up. Um, it can be very, very problematic. And of course, Shed Skin is there to potentially get rid of any status, any burns. Um, any burns toxic, I could be a bulk upset. Um, bulk up Dragon Dance. Um, possibilities are actually kind of endless for Scrafty given the circumstances. But the main reason why Scrafty is here is because of the fact that, as you can see by my team, I need a Dark type so that way I don't get overwhelmed by stuff like Double Dance um, Ranunculus, which can just um, set up an Acid Armor, Calm Mind, and then just. <laughs> sit there and wall the rest of my team. <clears throat> I mean, albeit I do have some like Trick Scarf, but if he's like Z item, that can be very, very problematic. And also having that stab knockoff is very, very nice for my team. Albeit it is slow and four times beat the fairy, but I do have Entei, which resists it, and Extra Drill, which resists it as well, as well as no offensive fairy check in Scolipede, so there's no harm, no foul there. And kind of a bargain there for six points with something as much versatility as Scrafty is, especially in terms of its three abilities. So, <clears throat> as you see now, we only have 17 points left to pick up two months for my strategy to work. And as you also see, I don't really have a... I want something to complement my f uh, Fire Water Grass Core to go along with the fact that I have a Dragon Fairy Steel Core. And I wanted to complete, I wanted that added bulk, something that can go both physically defensive or specially defensive and pair it up very, very well with my Clefable and Vaporeon. So it just so happens that with my round 9 pick, it was just sitting there waiting for me to take it, and that just happened to be my Mega Venusaur. So <clears throat> this was the most points I ever spent on any Pokemon here at 16 points, but considering how well it pairs up with Vaporeon. And with Clefable, can't really go wrong there. Of course, Thick Fat mitigating and weakening the um, fire and ice attacks aimed at it. Its, it's psychic weakness is mitigated between Scrafty and Excadrill. Um, flying weakness, I have some work to do, but I'll get to that towards the end. But basically, Mega Venusaur is just a great Pokemon just to fit there, just to fit on my balanced team. I think it just come in as my um, a backup water check, a backup <clears throat> ice check, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and plus having someone with access to stuff like a backup knockoff user, synthesis, uh, leech seed, the list goes on and on. So, and a backup toxic spikes absorber for as well for Scolipede. So <clears throat> that is Mega Venusaur. And I have one Pokemon left that I drafted. I didn't necessarily have to pick a 10th Mon. I could have saved my point. But I figured... I figured just go for broke here. I only have one point left to pick one Mon. And I could have memed here and drafted something completely innocuous. 
gone for something crazy like why not or something like that but I decided <clears throat> I decided that uh, not really to go for broke but just to kind of be out there and this also gives me another utility mon here so it may seem weird but with my last point and with my last mon I decided to go after lo regular Lopany and while it may seem out of the norm to draft something like regular Lopany here as opposed to just having Mega Lopany and just calling it a day. Um, Lopany can be a great disturbance for opposing teams, especially with its ability Klutz. I can give it a Flame Orb, a Toxic Orb, a Salt Vest, Choice Scarf, and just switch it onto any wall or um, Pokemon that doesn't want it. Um, of course, I have to be careful about stuff like Z items that they can't be. Um, tricked but you can be switch rude but still um something like this something like Lopany is actually pretty good because it gives me uh, not only does it give me a klutz user that can um mess with walls it also gives me something that can a third baton pass user as well as a backup healing wish user as opposed to just having clefable so i can run um healing wish i can run Switcheroo with any item of my choosing. <clears throat> and it also gets access to Cosmic Power, Encore, Baton Pass. So it's not like it's complete dead weight under the right circumstances. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much going to be Lopany, and that's going to be it for my team. Um, other than the fact that I don't really have a Flying Resist on my team, bar Circuitry and Excadrill, which aren't really the bulkiest when it comes to taking flying attacks or attacks in general, I still do like the team as a whole. I have a good mix of offense and defense. Um, I feel as though my team as a whole is very, very threatening, menacing, the whole nine yards. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. If you do enjoy the team, my draft recap, leave a like, leave a sus um, subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. And I hope you guys are excited as I am to get season number four of the MPO Miners underway. And hopefully we can make it to the playoffs, hopefully a championship and move on to the MPO Majors sometime in the near future. Um, hopefully I'm making an impact and make my mark on this league. This time, I feel a lot more confident. I do like my team, like I said before. I'm using a lot of Pokemon in which I have absolutely no experience with, like Vaporeon and Zerkatry and Scrafty, but I feel as though it's gonna be a fun season. I really do. Um, it is going to be a 10 week season as opposed to season three, which is only seven. So I do have a lot more opportunities to the point where I'm not completely out of the playoff race, so trying to keep that under wraps. So that's going to be it for me, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed, like I said before. Leave a like if you did. Leave a comment if you think, um, if you liked my team, uh, what you think I could improve on in terms of my draft, um, what you like, what you don't like. I don't judge. Um, and sure to follow the rest of the MPL Myers coaches as this is going to be one fun season and I hope you guys are excited and pumped up and cheering on your main red clutters. So that's going to be it from me guys. I'm going to get the heck out of here and until the next time, stay tuned for week number one. Until then, my name is Anthony aka Tone and I'm going to catch you guys on the flip side. Later!